In the last two videos, I talked to you about a voltage divider, a DC voltage divider, and a low-pass filter. Well, the companion to a low-pass filter is a high-pass filter. So it makes sense to talk about that now. Now, if you remember what a filter is, it's a uh, mathematical object, usually implemented in either hardware or software, that stops part of the frequency content of a signal. That sounds pretty abstract. So let's start. What's, remind, remind yourself what a signal is. A signal is a time-dependent voltage that means something. It has information encoded in it. In fact, here, let me show you. Here's my, uh, I, have, I have a hand-me-down iPod from my kids. Okay, and because I don't like earbuds all that much, I've got the headphones. So here's an iPod, and there's this wire that goes between them, all right? Well, there's a battery and a whole bunch of signal processing hardware in there, and a time-dependent voltage comes through this wire to my headphones. Well, it's a time-dependent voltage, but it's more than just that. It means something. And what's encoded in the signal that goes through this wire, the time-dependent voltage, is the music I want to listen to, or the podcast, or whatever it is I'm listening to. All right, so a signal is a time-dependent voltage that means something, has information encoded in it. And there's lots and lots of reasons why you'd want to throw out parts of a signal. Last time I talked to you about low-pass filters, and it was important for mathematical reasons to throw out very high-frequency parts of some signals, especially when you're doing data acquisition. Well, I work a lot with guitars, and the lowest frequency a guitar can make, I have my guitar right here, if you look at this, my guitar, one of my guitars. Okay, this string right here, this low E string, has a frequency of 82.4 hertz when you tune it to standard tuning. Well, there's electromagnetic noise in most buildings at 60 hertz. Well, let's see. If I don't need to hear anything below 82.4 hertz, and there's something I really don't want to hear at 60 hertz, maybe it makes sense to put a high-pass filter in there and just make sure that no frequency above about or below about 60 hertz makes it to the amplifier. Well, there you go. There's an what, what, application for a high-pass filter. And what it would look like is this. There's frequency and there's amplitude. Okay, but this is actually a little more than that. It's output over input. Okay, and the signal processing types call that a transfer function. So what I want to set this up as I'll make that 1.0 right there and make this uh, 0 down here. I'm actually doing this a little backwards, but there you go. Um, 1 there, 0 there. Let me do it this way. It's a little less confusing. There. The vertical axis goes from 0 to 1. Okay, and this goes out in frequency to wherever. Human beings, no human beings can hear more than 20,000 hertz, so it doesn't make sense to worry about what happens beyond that. You'll see this, and then it just drops right down. Well, that right there is the corner frequency, or the cutoff frequency. Okay. Now, notice it's a little bit off from that, that uh, angle, uh, the break point there. That break point's actually a little bit rounded, and we assume that you go down 3 dB uh, to get to the cutoff frequency. Okay. But what I could do is set that cutoff frequency for maybe 70 hertz. Okay. So if the highest, or the, I'm sorry, the lowest frequency the guitar can make is 82.4, well, that's up here somewhere, and the line noise, the 60 hertz hum, or if you're in a different country than the U.S., 50 hertz hum, is down here. Okay, well, I don't want to hear that. I'm pretty sure that's not music. So that, that uh, high-pass filter may do the trick for me. Now, this is it in words. Let's talk about it in mathematical terms now. What I did before was I made a simple voltage divider and I replaced one of the resistors with a capacitor to make a low pass filter. Well, to make a high pass filter it turns out you just replace the other resistor with a capacitor. So let's start with the voltage divider. Now, that little circle with the squiggly line through it means that a signal is being generated there. That's, vo that's the input voltage. And the squiggly line indicates that this is a time dependent voltage. Okay? It's generating a voltage that means something. And so we'll go up here and over. And that's a voltage divider. And there's V out, okay? Two resistors, and if you remember the ratio, uh, the, the ratio of the two resistances told you what the output voltage will be. Now, this, these two resistors don't change their value depending on the frequency of the signal going through them. 
but a capacitor does. And so, whereas last time with the uh, low pass filter, I replaced that resistor with a capacitor. This time, I'm going to replace the upper resistor with a capacitor. It'll have a capacitance C and a resistance R. That is a high pass filter. Now, there's more than one kind, but this is the simplest kind. All right, and remember that the other thing we were interested in at this point is the impedance of this element and this element. Impedance is the AC version of resistance. Resistance is DC. It refers to a DC, direct current, something that doesn't change with time. Impedance talks about resistance that does, uh, and a signal that does change with time. Okay, and the impedance of a capacitor varies with frequency. So let's let's look at this real quick. For a resistor, Z, the resistor equals R. Okay, Z always refers to impedance. For a capacitor. C equals 1 over J omega C. Now, 1 we know is just a number. J, remember that J is the square root of minus 1. And we use J, or electrical engineering types started using J, rather than I like the rest of the world does, because they were already using I for uh, current. All right? So anytime you're dealing with an electrical expression, something dealing with a circuit or uh, voltage or anything like that, I stands for current rather than the square root of minus 1. J stands for the square root of minus 1. And this is true everywhere in the electrical engineering world. I'm not just making this up. Okay? So there we go. Now, if you remember, uh, there's a voltage law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, that says that the sum of the voltages around a loop has to equal 0. All right, I can do that. Let's see, Vn, okay, that's a plus voltage, right? the voltage is being added into the loop. Some voltage is being dropped across there, and the remainder is being dropped across there. So let's see. If I knew what the impedance was, and I knew what the current was, I could write that. So let's see. I over J omega C, there's one, minus, so that's a bit, yeah, plus I should say. Right there is I R, but it's also just V out, so I'm going to leave it as V out. Okay. So the Add the voltage there and subtract the two voltages, and you got to get zero. So that works out there. Now I've got that term there. I've got that that uh, current. I don't want that. I don't want to need to know what that is. Right. So if I say V out equals I R, all right, and then I must equal V out over R, right? I can replace that, that I there with that expression right there. Okay, that will get rid of I for me. So I won't care what the current is. Don't need to know. So that's good. I'm going to erase stuff on my little board here, and I'm going to do a little, do a little bit of substitution here. And let's see. Let's write this out one more time. Vn equals now uh, V out over R. V out over R, replacing that I times 1 over j omega c plus v out. Okay, clear off some space here. Now, what I'm trying to come up with is that uh, transfer function I had written over there, which is v out over v in. Okay, so let's, let's change a few more things here. Let's say v out times 1 over j omega r c plus 1 equals V in. Okay, you can see I'm almost there. I'm almost to the point where I can have V out over V in. All i got to do is put that into some kind of uh, uh, form that's easy to invert. Well, I can do that, too. Let's see, J omega RC over J omega RC plus 1. Okay, all I did was multiply 1 by j omega rc times j omega rc. That's, that's also 1, so I haven't changed anything. Now I've got the same expressions in the denominator. 1 plus j omega rc. Okay, so there we go. Now I can invert that expression. Can I see this down here? Oh, good. Okay, so v out 
over Vn equals J omega RC 1 Okay, that's the transfer function for a high-pass filter. All right? So, the last question is, what does that look like? Well, I already drew it once, but I'm going to draw it again for you. Go plot this out for yourself. And remember, it's not going to look like I put it on the board here unless you're uh, plotting things in a log, log scale. All right, so I think I'm just going to leave that there. And there we go. Okay, there's frequency, again, and there's amplitude, okay, and this is, again, for reasons I don't really know, um, transfer function almost always gets called H, I don't know why, but it does, so you might say CH is somewhere, now, I'm going to show you one more thing that's really important, there's, there's complex numbers in there, because there's complex numbers, this is a complex expression, it's going to have square root of minus one in it, so if you want the uh, to plot the amplitude, you've got to tell your plotting program, I want the amplitude. So, the shorthand notation is you want the absolute value of that. When you do that, you're going to get something that looks like that. This line is really straight in a log-log scale. Remember, log vertical, log frequency. This right here will be your cutoff frequency. Okay? The frequency at which the uh, uh, high-pass filter starts to really cut off, okay? Starts to really start to uh, reduce the amplitude of the signal going through it. And the other thing you need to know is Fc equals 1 over Rc. That corner frequency is 1 over Rc. So if you're doing this as a circuit, if you know what the resistor value is and the capacitor value is, you just plug those numbers in. So let's take a really simple case. What if R equals 1,000 ohms and C equals 10 to the minus 6 farads or one microfarad. Now that seems like a really small number, but a farad is an awful lot. A one microfarad capacitor is actually fairly large. There's such a thing as a picofarad capacitor. Okay? So if that's one over RC, that's one over a thousand times one over a million. And if you work that out, you get one thousand now remember, this is 1,000 somethings. This is in 1,000 radians per second. Okay, that would be your cutoff frequency. If I had a value of 1,000 ohms and 1 microfarad, my cutoff frequency right, right here would be 1,000 radians per second. And if you want to know what that is in uh, hertz, just divide it by 2 pi. So there you go. We've done voltage dividers, showing how a voltage divider can be turned into a low-pass filter. And now, shown how a voltage divider can be turned into a high-pass filter.